Hey, Walt here from StogieReview.com with another video cigar review. And this time around, I have a first impression cigar review on uh, a forum topic that popped up on the, the fan forums just the other day from uh, a longtime member and, and commenter, Beaver C32, I believe. Uh, I know the Beaver part, I'm not quite sure about the C32. But anyway, he asked about the 2011 release of the Oliva Serie V Maduro Especial. Uh, I guess based on past experiences, he was he was interested in buying a box. However, he hasn't tried the new release, and he was wondering if anyone else has. Um, I have not. However, I do happen to have one handy. Uh, I was at an event on, I guess it was Wednesday. Uh, I got a tweet from Corey. See, you, you've seen him comment around as C. Zerby, asking me if I was going to go out to the studio at the back event. Uh, I wasn't even aware that there was an event. But we got together, we met up, and uh, I got to talking with uh, Dave Wagner, and sort of in the middle of a conversation, he hand me, handed me one of the 2011 release Oliva Serie V Maduro. Now, right off the bat, uh, you, you, what you may notice if you're a big fan of the Oliva Serie V Maduro is that this is not the traditional torpedo shape. I mean, this isn't the first time that they've done a Parejo, but the short Robusto that they came out with last year was just for the European market. Uh, the U.S. market's been receiving torpedoes since, I guess it was 2008 was the first release. So this time around, they're coming out with a Toro, more or less. And it is an actual Toro, not like those big, giant, fat double Toros that Oliva is, is good for coming out with. Um, this is more like the, the traditional size. And I'm really looking forward to smoking it. It feels good and comfortable. Uh, nice weight. And again, this is the only one I've got. And I'm hoping to maybe weasel my way into a few more. But for the time being... It's just going to be one and done. And it feels nice and consistent. I mean, there's a... It feels like a little bit of underfilling around the band. But aside from that, everything else feels really good. Color-wise, it's consistent from head to foot. There's one medium-sized vein that I tried to get a picture of that, that kind of stands out and looks kind of ugly, like a Frankenstein scar or something. Aside from that, it's a really nice cigar. The, the cap is neatly applied. The foot looks good. You know, there's some space between the tobacco... Uh, it doesn't feel overly hard, so all in all, this should smoke really well. So I've been a really big fan of the the Oliva Serie V Maduro since its release, I guess, again, I'm guessing here, 2008. Now, Last year was the first year that I was really disappointed with it. Uh, when they switched over to the San Andreas Maduro wrapper, the cigar just seemed to lose something. The, the draw is nice and free. It's got kind of a dark red fruit kind of a sweetness. So, let's get this thing lit. But anyway, the 2010 release was the first one that really didn't do it for me. And I think it was the change in, in, in wrapper leaf. Now, this this cigar has the same wrapper as last year. However, from what I understand, the, the filler's been changed up a little bit. Um, the, the two people that I talked to, the owner of the cigar shop and Dave, had mentioned that this was their favorite uh, V Maduro. Um, Dave told me the same thing about the, the 2010 release, and I wound up not really caring for it. So let's get this thing lit and, and see just how well the 2011 does. I've got maybe four of the 2009 left, and I hold on to them and covet them just because I really like that cigar. It's, it's fantastic. The nice thing about the Parejo shape or the, the non-torpedo tipped end, is that this should draw really well. I mean, over the past couple of years, one of the things I disliked about Oliva is maybe 7 out of 10 torpedoes tend to be a little stiff. I tend to like my cigars drawing a bit loose to begin with, so, so uh, maybe that's part of it. But when you, when you crush that head and start forming it, it just seems like there's a knot in there, and it's, it tends to be too tight, and I fight with the cigars too much. So, nine times out of ten, 
I reach for something else when I'm in a cigar shop, and I, I don't really gravitate towards the torpedoes too much. So, which is another reason why I'm really interested in seeing just the standard straight shape. It's kind of dry on the palate. It's got some nice punch behind it. There's some real heavy spice through the sinus. Some bitterness. It's got kind of a chewy kind of a texture. Maybe a bit of a woody taste. But uh, it's producing a good solid supply of smoke it's really dense easy to get through the sinus it seems to be burning really well to start i've got a little bit of a, a wrapper lift going on and i can't get close enough to the camera to do the old hand behind it and let it focus trick so you'll just have to to trust me when i say the wrapper leaf is lifting a little bit at the foot due to a small little crack that was there when i first got started but uh, all in all the cigar is smoking fairly well to start and it's fairly early. It's about quarter after 7 a.m. in the morning. Obviously, if I said a.m., it's in the morning. But it's uh, about quarter after 7. I've got a cup of coffee standing by. So this isn't your, you know, you're pairing it with water, um, you know, exact kind of review. I'm just kind of winging it. Uh, you know, I'm, I was looking forward to smoking this cigar. I needed something for on Stogie Review tomorrow, being Sunday. And uh, it's just kind of tradition in my house on the weekends to have a cup of coffee and a cigar. So merge all that together and just kill a lot of birds with one stone. And that's where we're at. So sit tight. I'll be back. We'll take a look, another look at the Oliva Siri V Maduro 2011. And uh, we'll kind of go from there. Well, I'm a little ways into my Oliva Siri V Maduro Especial 2011. I guess it's I'm about an inch, inch and a quarter into it. And I've got to say, I really like the way it's smoking. The, the ash is holding a nice compacted shape. The burn line is relatively even. I mean, I've got a little wave here and there, but it, it, just all in all, it's it's smoking really well. I, I did have to touch it up once. I spent a little too much time with it sitting in the ashtray. Aside from that, it's providing lots of dense smoke, easy to get through the, the sinus, you know, retrohale it. And it, it's, it just, it seems to coat the palate really well. It still seems to have a kind of a, a dry, quality across the palate <laughs> I was a little looking for a word there but at the same time it's got kind of a chewy sort of texture it, there it, it seems opposite you know if, if it were kind of chewy you would think thick and creamy but it's really not it's it's kind of interesting it's 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 thick and chewy initially and then it kind of leaves you dry after you expel the smoke and stuff so kind of an interesting way it's smoking the flavor profile is more or less the same as it was when it started off. You know, there's some bitterness, there's some woody flavor, and I'm not getting that that kind of sweetness that I was that I was getting on the pre-light. Uh, that seems to be completely gone. It's mostly just kind of bitter and some wood flavors, and I'm getting a little bit of coffee, but I don't know whether that's from the cigar or from the actual coffee that I'm drinking in between puffs. So we're just going to assume that it's it's the coffee and just leave it out of the flavor profile notes. But it's um. It's, it's a really good cigar so far. I don't know that I like it better than 2009, though. It seems to be missing... Still, it seems to be missing something. The The older release just seemed to be bolder and richer and have just a more vibrant flavor profile, where this one is kind of subdued. I don't really want to say it's dull, but there's really nothing bright about it. It doesn't stand out. It's not really rich. It's it's smoking well. It's It's got good flavor. But it's no 2009. Um, if you were to take this format and make a 2000, you know, take the blend from 2009 and put it in this format, I think it would be a home run. Just a spectacular cigar. It's smoking really well. Whereas the 2009, again, with the torpedo shape, you know, seven out of ten I found to be too tight for my liking. This one, on the other hand, is smoking beautifully. Take that blend, put it in this format, and you've got an absolute winner. I'd smoke it day in and day out if I could afford it and I could get get my hands on them that often I would just I think I would like that that uh, that compilation most or combination
And, you know, I don't know what it is that makes me say it's missing something. I don't know whether it's just that I'm not a big fan of the San Andreas Maduro wrapper, which which very well could be the case. I mean, the, the Murcielago that also uses that wrapper I think is very good, but it's it's not something I think is spectacular. Um, I, I do really like Padron cigars, and, you know, there's been rumors for years that they use San Andreas Maduro on their wrappers. I, I do really like those. I don't know whether it's just the, the filler combination or what, but... You know, if I if I think back and I and I start comparing cigars with a, a broadleaf Maduro wrapper versus cigars with a San Andreas Maduro wrapper, you know, most of the times I seem to gravitate more towards the the Connecticut broadleaf. I, I think it just has a more vibrant flavor, and you know, I think maybe that's I don't know maybe that's where I'm seeing this cigar as missing something. It doesn't have that rich sort of bold flavor that I get out of the Connecticut broadleaf. So ultimately, I just don't like it as much. But, you know, that's just my hypothesis at this point. At any rate, I'm going to take a quick break. I'll come back in just a little bit. We'll take another look at the cigar. This probably isn't going to be one of those full-blown 30-minute reviews, unless I start rambling or something. Uh, mainly because I don't want to do the whole write-up thing, and I don't want to do a full-blown review on a single cigar. I just don't think it's fair. Um, you know, I could have got the exception out of the batch, and this one's fantastic, and, you know, the next five I smoke are just horrible. It, it, chances are very good that that won't happen, but, you know, there is always the possibility. So I like smoking four or five, six cigars before I do one of those full-blown reviews. So, again, this is going to be a first impression. I don't know how long this video is going to be, how much actual cigar content it's going to contain. If I start rambling, then I'm just going to start rambling, and, and it is what it is. It's my review, and I'm going to do what I want. <laughs> so ultimately that's what it boils down to so sit tight i'll be right back and we'll take another look at the oliva siri v maduro especial 2011 well it's been about an hour and 15 minutes total elapsed time and it's getting to the point where it's probably about time to wrap up this video not necessarily a cigar i'm going to be smoking this for a little while yet but i don't know that it's going to have much transition between what i'm going to tell you now and when it gets really short so it's probably just easiest just to condense it, do one last little video clip, and then kind of let you be on your way. So with that said, let's talk about the cigar. Its burning characteristics are still going very strong. The burn line is thin. It's relatively even. Again, like before, there's a few waves here and there, but all in all, it's smoking really well. Or it's burning really well. The, the smoke volume is still very good. It's nice and heavy. It's dense. It coats the palate well. It's not quite as dry now as it was earlier on. It's picking up more of a, a creamy texture at this point, and it's, it's still got plenty of punch through the sinus. There's a nice uh, spicy component to it. Uh, for, for people that are not really experienced with retrohaling the smoke or taking a puff and, and sort of spinning it around in the mouth and out the nose, this may be enough to make your eyes water or, or scrunch up, or things like that. Um, it's a little heavy, but you know, since I, I retrohale more than I probably should, it's really not a big deal. As it gets shorter, the cigar is getting bolder. The fl flavor profile is getting richer. And it's more along the lines of what I liked in the earlier releases, 2009, 2008. Um, it's not quite as rich and bold as those earlier releases. However, it is getting there. And the cigar is much more enjoyable now than it was earlier on. The flavor profile just seems to have picked up tremendously. I'm getting, <clears throat> excuse me, sort of like, um, like bitter dark chocolate flavors. There's some woody tones in there. There's a little bit of spiciness. And still none of that sweetness that I got earlier on. So the, the flavor profiles themselves really haven't changed up much with the exception of the addition of some some cocoa or chocolate flavors. But they've they've ramped up in terms of intensity. Where this was sort of a medium bodied, medium to full flavored cigar earlier on, at this point it's more of a medium bodied cigar, full flavored. So there there was definitely a, a a progression, a step up in flavor intensity or flavor level. And, you know, just all in all, I think this cigar is definitely better than the 2010 release. Personally, I really like this shape. I think it smokes so much better than, than the Oliva Torpedoes. But again, that could just be my smoking preference. But I find that these straight shapes smoke better, and this one is 
on the money in terms of how it smokes and and the and the draw and how free it is versus how constricted it could be with a torpedo and things like that. So, you know, I, I think this cigar is definitely a step up from last year's 2010 release. It's not quite as good as the 2009 and 2008 varieties, but, you know, again, this is no slouch. This cigar is really good. I don't know what the the production rate is on these, whether it's just going to be the same amount as last year, and I don't know how many thousand boxes were made, but typically these come in 10-count boxes, and, you know, they're between maybe like $85 and $100 per 10-count box, depending on where you purchase these from, and state taxes and things like that. Um, locally, these will probably between be between 8 and $9, I would imagine, uh, unless, of course, there's another price increase, in which case really don't know what these are going to be but just kind of assuming based on the very little information i have on it i don't know whether the filler blend or the filler tweak that oliva made will increase price or anything like that i doubt you'll see any drop in price but uh all in all a good solid cigar i'm, I'm really impressed uh i wasn't expecting to like it nearly as much as i am just because again that 2000 release was kind of a, or that 2010 release was kind of a letdown and uh this one really is made up for it and i'm looking forward to smoking more if i can manage to weasel some more off of dave or uh, track them down when they when they are released from what i understand the one local shop in the area is getting four boxes in at some point in time so i guess i'll have to keep an eye out at that shop and see if they make an appearance and if they do i'll buy a few so that is my thoughts or those are my thoughts on the Oliva Serie V Maduro Especial 2011. That's always a mouthful to say. But that's what I have to say about this particular cigar. I would definitely recommend you try it if you like the Oliva Serie V Maduro. And if you were kind of on the fence like I was about the 2010, definitely give the 2011 a try because I, I do think it is much, much better. So with all that said, thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time.